This podcast is sponsored by Slug and Lettuce, where they're actually making Slug and Lettuce. Look at this Swiss roll on a plate. Welcome to the Daft Lad Podcast. I take no prisoners, just inmates, whatever that fucking means. Daft. This is... Oh, I've dropped my Swiss roll. What's up, slugs? How we doing? Welcome to episode three of the uh, Daft Lad Podcast. So, last episode I had a cold. This episode, I've got a new cold. Fantastic. I'm a weak man. I'm just a male trying to get by. Um, God gave me a fantastic ass with a shit immune system. I need to bulk buy some Yakult. Imagine if the COVID cure was 20 bottles of Yakult a day. The, the only way I can describe this variant of cold is uh, imagine if someone sprayed Lynx ice the back of your nasal cavity. Nasal cavity, that's a, quite a big word for me, that. I did write down here, upper throat, nose, minds, but I think nasal cavity will do better than that. But yeah, it's it's been an eventful week, really, since the last episode. Um, I've actually found a frozen calzone. If you ever watched and listened to episode one of the Daft Lad podcast, I talked about, I've never seen in 25 years of my whole existence, a frozen calzone in a shop. And I found one. The, the lass's mum got me one. Go on, Shar, legend. Absolute legend. It was decent. Um, It was quite hard to cook it, because... Uh, it was like a bomb. It was wrapped very well by a thick layer of bread. From it was from Lidl. This uh, so frozen calzone from Lidl. It's uh, it was. I couldn't tell if it was cooked on inside, but it was pretty bre- It was pretty burnt on the outside, but it was all right. It was decent. I, it was quite good to get off the bucket list. Yeah. So this podcast is not sponsored by Slug and Lettuce, but I wish it was. Um, I, I love going there. You know, it's two for one on cocktails. You can't beat a bubblegum cocktail, and the menu is full of starters. So. And you just walk in and just sit down and just order it and then F off. It's fun. It's great. It's great. And also, they don't start selling Swiss roll. Um, this is my uh, Swiss roll burrito. Uh, you can see it. Strawberry and cream. It's Morrison's own. It's fantastic. I have it every day. For five days a week. So not every day. But yeah, Slug and Lettuce. It's a good spot. It's a very weird name to call your restaurant. Imagine it meeting. Just like, oh, well, I'm going to call this restaurant. You know, it's quite, quite a nice vibe. You got starters for just on the menu. You got some two for one cocktails. Everyone loves that. Be going to call it, you know, some that fit in the city vibe. You know what I mean? Oh, we'll call it Slug and Lettuce. I wonder if you had any other ideas for names. Oh, what so? Uh, what are you going to call it then? Ah, oh, Earthworm and Cabbage. I'm looking forward to when uh, Slug and Lettuce collab with Mackey's. Though that's going to be great. Imagine that two for one on fruit shoots and a McChicken Slug. <laughs> <laughs> Book slug sandwich. <laughs> can I can I have a, can I have a large slug legend and carrot sticks, please? So every night before bed, I smash in TikTok for a couple of hours. I was deep. I was deep into TikTok the other day, and I was watching this uh, this couple travel around the world trying out different McDonald's, which was pretty cool. So they went to the Philippines, right, and they got a mix spaghetti, which is unreal. And then I think they had a, a mix shrimp, which is oh, that's grim. Is that? Imagine having that. Ugh. I'd rather have a mixed Swiss roll. But yeah, I'm an uncultured Yorkshireman who only eats pasta and pizza, so I don't like all that seafood stuff. And then uh, they went to Canada and had a McLobster, which is, <laughs> who comes up with that? <laughs> Imagine standing at the screen in Canada Mackey's, just like, oh, might get some mozzarella sticks. Oh, I'll get, I'll get six chicken nuggets, made of chicken. And just to top it all off, a McLobster. Speaking of food, I went to Morrison's again. Um... And I got my first ever purchase of an Arctic roll in decades. If you don't know what Arctic roll is, it's almost like Swiss roll, but the outer layer is this sort of texture, but the inner layer is just ice cream. Beautiful. So I went in, put my hand into the fridge. The fridges are so loud in Morrison's, I don't know what they're powered by. And then, so I picked it out, I was like, oh, Arctic roll, I'm going to buy some. I looked at the packaging, it's made from bird's eye. I never knew that. I only thought bird's eye made those chicken burgers that were really thin. And uh, epic as a kid, but you could taste them for years after you ate them. And I also thought they only made fish cakes, bird's eye. So to see them make Arctic roll, I was like, that's mint. What's going to be next? Fucking fish roll. And then I saw the made Arctic roll. I was like, that's mint. They're going to take over the Arctic roll market. And then I'm thinking like, oh, collab, fish roll, Arctic fish, glacier cake. They, they could do so much, could bird's eye. Um, they're, very, they're going places. They're going places.
You know on TV programmes or news channels, they're always blurring out number plates. I just think, a TV industry is just insecure as fuck. Also, who are these people sat at home, watching Look North at 6pm, going like, oh, oh, this could be the one, Dave. You know, we could, we could see an unblurred fucking number plate here. Jesus. They're just sat there at home every day watching TV, waiting for an unblurred bloody number plate. Just sat there rubbing their hands together going, oh, oh hey, Lance, this could be the day. Could be the one. <laughs> when in fact, you could go out of your fucking house. There's no unblurred number plates in the whole world. Look at your next door neighbor's number plate. I don't know what you can do with that. Is there a secret fucking Easter egg chest in number plates? I don't, I don't understand what they can do, like... Obviously, I'm not going to give my number plate out, but I don't know what you can do. You can't hack into any mainframe with it, so there's, there's no point. Uh, Fox or Interlube, stop talking. <laughs> right, this segment I came up with today, pretty proud of it. It's called Yeet or Veet. I'm going to use a random name generator, and uh, it's going to bring out some, you know, some famous people that we all know. I'm not going to use some randomers. Which actually would be quite cool to use some more. Anyway, um, and I'm just going to say if I would like to yeet them. Yeeting someone for me means picking them up and throwing them like a javelin down a school corridor. Just like the famous meme, this bitch empty, yeet. I've all taught you something there. Or veeting someone is uh, putting hair removal cream on their scalp and removing hair. So yeet or veet. Uh, it's pretty pretty cool concept. So this week's Yeeto V category is Harry Potter characters, and it's uh, it's gonna be good. This um, I found a random name generator on the Google, so I'm gonna put Harry. Right here we go, Yeeto V generate. So we got Cedric Diggory. I'm definitely gonna beat his scalp. He's dead anyway, so his scalp will all be beated by the soil. Um, Professor Trelawney. She's cool. I might give her a yeet down a school corridor. Maybe down the potions class. Um, who else we got? Charlie Weasley. I could give a crap about him. Gildry Lockhart. I'll give him a quick V. I'll give him a quick V on his shins. Hermione Granger. I'd, I'd give her a yeet, but I'd V a cat. Lavender Brown. That's the one who really loves Ron Weasley. And look at Marcus Flint. What a right chav he is. Um, I probably yeah, uh, I'll probably veto his uh, yeah, I'll probably veto him. Um, Dean Thomas manages to get one word into every film. Um, I'm I'm gonna give him a yeet down the Great Hall. Luna Love Good yeet or veet? I'll I'll probably give her a yeet, and she'd probably be fucking buzzing about that to be honest. Even if I vetoed her, she'd probably be buzzing, which is uh, a a good uh, a good personality trait. Albus Severus Potter, I'll probably just throw him under train or something. Instead of Yeet or Veet. Uh, oh, Slughorn's my favourite character. I'm not going to do that with him. Victor Crumb. It looks like he's already bloody vetoed himself, really. Uh, we'll have one last go. Professor Felch. Um, he's already vetoed himself. And then Rita Skeeter. I would Yeet her and Veet her at the same time. Because she is annoying as fuck. So that's, uh, that's a little uh, that's a little segment I like to call Yeet or Veet. Please send me in any famous people or celebrities or randomers that you would like me to feature in the ERV um, at the Daft Lad Podcast on the socials or email me at the Daft Lad Podcast at gmail.com. Bit of fun, that one, it. Fox on interlude. Shat it, please. This has probably happened to a lot of people. Um, I was coming out of Morrison's. Again, I fucking love Morrison's, mate, all right? Don't judge. Uh, come out of Morrison's other day, and I saw about 15 youths, probably about 13 to 15-year-olds, and they were just stood outside the trolley shelter, where, you know, where they keep all trolleys, just outside the shop on a Saturday night. What a wild Saturday night that is for 14-year-olds nowadays, you know what I mean? I know doing big shop on a Saturday night isn't best, isn't the coolest, but it's the quietest, but... Walking out, seeing about 15 of these 14-year-olds just stood outside shop. In trolley shelter of all places. It was dark, it was raining. Imagine group chat before that, you know what I mean? Oh, lads, you want to meet me down at Morrison's in five? Outside trolley shelter. Not the outside trolleys, the deep, girthy trolleys, you know what I mean? Oh, and lads, everyone bring a pound for slots. <laughs> the slots meaning that, you know, you have to put a little chain into 
you have to put a quid in the chain in to get your trolley out, you know, it's a bit of banter, that Scarab Beach banter. Trolley wise, it's always sad, there's always Ron Rogue trolley just by itself in the wilderness, there's like a trolley on the side of the motorway, and it's like it's just left the trolley centre, at Morrison's trolley centre, what the fuck, it's just like the, the wind has blown it out of the supermarket, it's gone onto the main road, it's like, I'm free! <laughs> It starts flying out motorway and it's curbed it. It's it's a curb, it's been tripped up. It's like, no. Tell you what, this is this happened to me the other day. I bet it happens to a lot of people who watch Facebook, right? I don't know if this happens to you, right? So someone gets engaged on your Facebook and you're like, oh, that's class. I'll, I'll leave a comment saying congrats, even though I've maybe not spoken to them in years, but it's it's always good to see. And you give them a congrats comment. And then as soon as you comment, you, you feel good about yourself. You know, you, you're going to make them happy and you're pretty happy you said it. And then just make sure you do this next step, and that is to go onto the top right of the post where the three dots are, click on that, and press turn off notifications for this goddamn post. My god, I forgot to do it. Basically, just don't do it, and then get get back working or something, because then in like a two hours when you check your Facebook again, it basically feels like your birthday when you get 30 notifications, and you look and it's like, oh, what's this? What's happened? You look on it, it's like, congrats, congrats, fucking hell. Don't make the same mistake as me. Birthdays on Facebook aren't as epic nowadays because I think a lot of people don't use Facebook, which is, is it's sad, like, but um, back in day when we were in college, like 10 years ago, I felt like having a birthday on Facebook was, oh, it was huge. You just wake up on your birthday morning back in college, you see 20 notifications on your Facebook at 9 o'clock in the morning, and you're just laying in bed, just like, this is the life, bud. This is great. If you fast forward 10 years now and... Nowadays, when it's your birthday and it's on Facebook, you get about five people saying happy birthday and your uncle sending you fucking balloons as a status. What's that about? Ah, interlude means Swiss rock. Right, this segment is what I like to call auto glass repair, auto glass shit faced. Um, auto glass was fantastic back in the day. I don't know what it's doing nowadays. Maybe it's still fixing double glazing. But I thought I'd call it this segment. So I'm going to read out some facts about something in particular. And this week I'm going to be talking about glass. Um, obviously you're thinking, what the fuck is he on about? But obviously it's uh, it's a bit of fun. Just like the whole Daft Lab podcast is. So here we go. Facts about glass. Glass can be formed by lightning. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Bloody hell. The weather's doing your smelting for you. Fantastic. It takes one million years for glass to decompose. So it takes a million years for glass to decompose. What about double glaze windows? Do they take two million years? Triple glaze? Can you get triple glaze? Three million years? I wonder if Gary from Autoglass could inject his special resin in a million years to save him all. You never know. Could be an extinct movie, that. When glass breaks, the cracks move at 3,000 per mile an hour. Jesus. Gap it market there. Double glaze powered airplanes. <laughs> Imagine that everyone just sits down, seat belts on. Pilots talking shit. Then you got Ian from Surrey on runway. Gets a double glazed window, puts it into both engines. <laughs> then starts throwing pebbles at them until it breaks. And Pilot's just there every time he throws a pebble, waiting to see if it cracks and it sends the plane 3,000 mile an hour. Just like, we're going to be setting off in three, two, one. Ian, throw it. Boof. Pings off. Uh, false alarm. Three, two, one. Ian, lob it. Throwing pebble, both. Just keeps going until Ian cracks it all into double glazed. Yeet. You've got for me throw to Australia in milliseconds. That's enough facts about glass. So that is a segment, auto glass repair. Auto glass shit faced. Anyway, Fox aren't interlude. <laughs> you know, last episode, if you did listen to it, if you didn't, you're a bastard. I'm joking. Last episode, I was on about bowling. Today, I realised that Berlin is basically paying 5 to 10 quid to basically just keep checking behind you to see if anyone stole your hoodie, jacket, handbag. That's basically what Berlin is. I've not gone Berlin and not been absolutely worried about my items behind me on the low-benched chairs. I don't, I don't know if you do that, but like I take my jacket off. It's got nothing in it apart from a sachet of Gaviscon and some hand sanitizer, but... I fold it up nicely on the bench, and every time I go bowl, I'll step a few feet away from the bowling bench. I'm just like, still there? Good. Then, f literally 10 seconds later, is it still there? 
decent. That's good. That's all right. So yeah, basically paying 10 quid to check on your items. Right, on to the emails this week. And I've got an email from Philip Gass. And Philip says, Hi, Jamie. I hope you aren't well, you fucking prick. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I just wanted to say I love your podcast more than my wife. And I have divorced her for you. Will you marry me? Fucking hell, Jesus, Philip. Talk about mixed signals. Obviously, that was a joke, everyone. Uh, that was a joke for the Daft Lad podcast. The name Philip Gass. And I was actually watching a Disneyland Paris documentary. And he was the president of France when Disneyland opened, was Philip Gass, I think. So <laughs> I thought I'd use him for the podcast. Uh, but yeah, send me your questions or anything random to me email, the Daft Lad podcast at gmail.com. So before I go, everyone, I'm going to give you a beautiful quote that I've come up with. And it goes like this. You're at your most vulnerable when you're eating a McDonald's in your car. Fact. So there you go. That's episode three. I'm going to go to Sophology now and have steak and ale pie. Fantastic. So I'll see you in the next one, you fucks. <laughs> you know.